Hello, it's Scott Manley here, playing around with uh, cargo planes again. I mean, if you've played with Ferrum Aerospace, you'll recognise this as the Husky. And if you've played with aircraft before, I'll bet you've done this. You've strapped some solid rocket boosters on aircraft to see just how they help with uh, things like takeoff, for example. Here we are, we're spooling up with the brakes on. Once we get to 100%, we're gonna cut the brakes. And for some reason, they take a while to disengage, but eventually, roll down the runway, we fire the engine, we take off at ridiculous speed. Now, of course, this is actually a genuine, there is a real-world parallel to this. It's called a Rato or Jato, depending upon uh, which system you're talking about. But generally, they're both using solid rocket boosters. Um, unfortunately, sometimes that's just a little too much for the aircraft, especially with Ferrum, where uh, your aircraft can actually spontaneously disassemble themselves. Uh, in the unplanned kind of way. Of course, uh, you know, if you're a little more careful and, and use uh, the trim to actually fly the aircraft, then you can actually do some quite amazing things, like uh, get up to, into straight vertical climbs with all the engines running. Once you're out of... oh, crap, no. Yes, uh, wow! They didn't even know what hit them there, huh? Especially since that cockpit has no windows at this time. No, 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 no. Uh, if you fly a little better, you can actually get up to some reasonable altitude. And, uh, well, I also have deadly re-entry installed on this, so unfortunately for this aircraft, it doesn't quite hold together through the stress of the heating and the re-entry and everything else. <laughs> just the poor cockpit just flying there. No, 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 no. The real reason I'm doing this is not because of the jet assisted takeoff. Everybody's done that. No, I want to do rocket assisted takeoff and landing. And this is actually, uh, I'm trying to implement something called Operation Credible Sport. Now, Credible Sport is uh, a, an operation which is really deserving of an entry into the real world Kerbal Aviation Program series. Um, it was a response to the hostage crisis of the late 1970s, early 80s, where uh, 52 American hostages were held in the US Embassy after the Iranian Revolution. They were held for like over a year, and it was a, a big thing, basically, you know, big news for a long time. Um, they thought that they would be able to release these hostages, but with 52 of them, they would need a whole bunch of helicopters. And in fact, they originally had a mission which involved six helicopters, but they had problems with their hydraulic units, so they decided not to continue the mission. And of course, later the Ayatollah claimed that it was divine intervention that had prevented this mission from going forth. So yeah, the other mission they looked at was Incredible Sport, where they took a C-130 Galaxy cargo plane and fitted it with rockets to slow it down and cushion its descent, and similarly fitted it with more rockets to accelerate it off very quickly. They located a landing site, which was a football field. Now, a football field is not the largest place in the world. It's much shorter even than aircraft carriers, right? But they thought that with all these modifications, they would be able to land a cargo aircraft carrying a special forces unit in this area and turn it around and then be able to take off again. So this is my attempt to replicate this. And you can see I've strapped solid rocket boosters under the wings. I've strapped separatrons all around those fuel tanks on the side. I have vertical facing separatrons pointing upwards and here I am going for my runway landing, super short landing here, ah, firing the braking thrusters and as my vertical velocity drops I fire vertical thrusters to cushion my descent and then I detach those. Now that isn't quite the same as the real thing because I didn't use air brakes on that design but look, practically landed, well I was spent very little spe space on the runway there. I mean, if you consider from the point I touch the runway to the point I actually stop, that's a pretty darn short landing. But I think I can do a whole lot better. Anyway, time to take this thing off. Unfortunately, you know, taxing this thing in a circle isn't an option, so we're just gonna show how quickly it can take off. So when the thing starts moving, we fire the engine, we fire the vertical engines, and we are off, like, almost instantly, and almost into a vertical climb. This thing is nuts. So there's no doubt that it could take off. No, uh, the landing is really hard, but it is possible. 
Although, uh, I, you'll see the number of failed attempts I had later. Let's, uh, of course, uh, do a nice victory roll there, showing things off. <laughs> that was not an easy operation, <laughs> by any means. Um, of course, i got to mention that there is like a whole conspiracy theory, the October Surprise conspiracy theory, that um, I don't know how, how <laughs> what evidence supports it, but there's a whole theory that uh, the hostage delay was hostage release was delayed until the day after Reagan's inauguration. And, uh, yes, you could talk that over amongst yourselves, but certainly I'm not going to argue one way or another. At least with the moon landing hoaxes, I can usually shoot down their theories with actual science. And here we are, of course, coming in for a landing, just to, so you can see how long this thing actually takes from a real landing much much further slamming on the brakes and yeah it takes a really long time it takes more than the length of a single football field ah but that's it that was that was a complete mission a simulated mission where we took off under normal jet power we uh, landed using the special rockets then uh, we took off again using rocket assist and flew our loop and landed with a with our hostages right mission successful now, uh, I decided to actually demonstrate the notion of where we would be coming in over the top of the stands of a football field. So we tried to like fly over a building and then and mostly managed to get away with it. Uh, didn't break so quickly. That's pretty close. Now, uh, take off once again. We've got to take off before we uh, run out of runway. Of course, we'd normally turn this thing around. Uh, it wasn't the shortest takeoff, but you have to account for the fact that uh, there was a building in the way. Trying this again. Now, this is a much improved version. I added much more vertical thrust and I added air brakes. You see the air brakes on this? You have to basically put a bunch of flaps that flip out at 90 degrees when they're firing. Now, in this case, it's much, much, much harsher. But, but totally does it this time. Oh, wow. Also notice extra struts holding on the tailplane for this operation. Not bad indeed. Now how quickly can we take off? Well we know we can take off practically on a dime. I think we can take off with like one or two plane lengths, right? So are we ready? Steady. Engines firing. Wait for the brakes to go. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Brakes disabled, and go! Go! Look at that! It, it does, it takes off in like one plane length. <laughs> so that means in theory, uh, you could probably land this on the roof of one of those buildings there. Unfortunately, I spent like 50 attempts trying to do so, gave up. Uh, <laughs> also, you can do really stupid things such as, uh, you know, firing the engines in flight. Here we go, watch this. We're gonna try and do, uh, we're gonna try and kill all our forward velocity, watch this. Just, we're, we're coming to a halt in midair, like if there's a missile that relies on us being, us moving as a, a sight, it will not be able to see us because our velocity drops to something like under, under 20 meters per second. Look at that, 12 meters per second, wow. That's pretty awesome. Of course, these things only last so long, and then uh, now we're actually flying backwards. So, uh, gotta get out of this. And of course, to do this, we're only 500 meters up. Uh, engines take a moment to spool up. We're running out of air, but thankfully we have those extra engines to get us back into forward motion. Look at that! Brilliant. Well, I think that's a rather successful test, at least compared to well all the other uh, <laughs> attempts. It took a while to learn to do this, and uh, it was no mean thing. Anyway, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.
Let's go, let's go. But for a moment, I am safe. 